special person to me who I've really gotten to know maybe about seven or eight year, years now. Kathleen Benfield from Louisiana. She found us, uh, I think maybe through the internet or however it was, and she's a, a, you know, a very important state leader in Louisiana advocating against a whole host of issues, but includes you know, the issue of predatory gambling on, on her organization's agenda. And she's like, you know, we do these bi-weekly calls every Tuesday, she's on every call. If Kathleen and, you know, will step up and volunteer to do stuff, like, those are people you just do it. You know, and it just, it means so much to me, you know, whether it's helping with this conference, whether it's making calls, outreach to people, she'll do whatever it takes to, to advance it, and the ultimate team player. And I'm just really honored to have her with us, and I uh, would love to have you do the blessing for our, for our dinner tonight. I want to say that I really appreciated Paul's remarks today. I enjoyed that. It was it was good. Paul. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for this conference. I thank you especially for SPG and for the last word and the wonderful help that he has provided to me in the years that I've been working on this issue. Lord, I thank you for our diversity, but I also thank you for our common goal in which we seek to protect people from this awful scourge on our nation, and especially children who are. Father, you have said in your word that you determine the bounds of our habitations, in other words, the places where we live, and the times in which we live. And I thank you that you have placed each one of us in our own respective places and um, in this particular time, and that you have appointed us to this important goal and work. I'm, re I'm reminded, uh, especially from Paul, about the book of Esther and how it was said of her. And who knows whether or not you were appointed to such a time as this. I thank you that each person here, Lord, that you have appointed them and equipped them for this mighty work. And I pray that you would give blessings upon them, give them courage and boldness, and give them every resource they need to accomplish the task. Thank you for this food. Thank you for the people that prepared us. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. So if everyone could please go through the food line. And then once everyone has a plate of food, we'll begin a very short program. because they want to be somebody, right? It gives them status, it makes you somebody. And that's not true for everybody, but it's definitely a big part of why people run for office. But one of the things that I've learned from being involved with this movement over the last 15 years is that the kind of people that get involved with this fight, they're not looking for status or glory. These are the kind of people that get involved and who want to do something. They're looking to make society better. So on the home page of our, our Stop Predatory Gambling website, you know, we have a little section that we refer to, you know, when you come to visit our site, we refer to it as our agreement, okay? Our agreement with you, with you, the person visiting the site, you, our supporter who's coming, signing up, or potentially making a donation or getting involved with us. And so in our agreement with you, we say, here's what you can expect from us, you know, kind of putting it out there to you. Is, is the corrupt, and this is how we frame it, is the corrupt and expanding power of commercialized gambling harming the people that you, in your life and the people in the world around you? We ask, are you passionate about protecting others, especially kids, from suffering the abuse, neglect, and poverty that predatory gambling causes? But this is where it really narrow, starts to narrow down here in terms of defining the kind of people to get involved with this. The next question we ask is, when you see a wrong in the world, in the world around you, you know, do you act to make it right? 
no matter the power of your opponent. And most importantly, are you the kind of person who goes after the root of an evil rather than hacking at its branches? And do you want to be with others who possess that same kind of character? So I think in those five lines, it took us a long time to kind of craft that, but to me, like that, those five lines, that epitomizes our national organization, our network, that, that pulls across from every state in this country, that pulls it from all political stripes, the kind of people who, when they see it wrong, they, they try to make it right. And, they, and not only they, they focus on the end of the evil, they focus on the root of the evil, something that, that is hurting, you know, affects so many aspects of our society. And so the people, again, that are involved with this fight, they don't seek the, they don't seek the limelight, they don't seek public recognition, they don't need validation from the newspapers or you know, the accolades, you know, or awards and that type of thing. They're just people who wake up in the morning and they try to do the right thing. Those are the kinds of people involved with this fight. And they come from the left, the political left, and the political right in our nation. And that's why the people who've been involved with this effort over the last, you know, since I've been involved the last 15 years, you all have changed me profoundly as a person, forever, in a very profound way. And I, it's something I would never would have envisioned. But, but one other big change that happened to me over the course of the last 15 years in this work is that I really began to understand kind of deep into my bones you know, what it means to put your faith into action. You know, what that really means. And, I, and growing up in the Boston area, you know, I was raised Catholic, but to be perfectly honest with you, it was, it was an inherited religion for me. Like I didn't get it. I used to think that my mom would make me go to CCD. It was like Sundays, you know, it's just that hang on with my friends. I, I didn't get it the big picture at all. I didn't understand any of it. I didn't take it that seriously. Um, but I have to say, over the last 15 years, I have really come to understand what it means to try to be poor in spirit, which means to try to live with, with a deep sense of humility, and to try to act with mercy, and to act with forgiveness. And so for years, I, I always used to hear people say, you know, you know that phrase, you know, hey, that guy, he's the salt of the earth, you know? But the context when they would say it, you know, it might be over a beer or something, somebody would say, yeah, that guy, he's the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. I never really understood what that phrase meant, okay? Generally, the context was, he was just a nice guy. But the phrase that I really come to with, the phrase salt of the earth, as I've come to understand what it really means, it means a lot more than that, okay? And what it means to, to, to be the salt of the earth is to try to live your life, all aspects of your life, with goodness and virtue. And salt is also something that brings out the taste in food. So if you're somebody that brings out the, you know, if you're the salt of the earth, you're somebody that brings out the best in other people. So it's with that understanding that I share with you, you know, if I had to describe the character of the members of Stop Predatory Gambling, is they are, in our society, salt shakers. Okay. To a person, they're salt shakers. And so we have created an award here at Stop Predatory Gambling that we will issue occasionally to recognize some really, really special salt shakers. And tonight we have four of our four, we have four of our salt shaker awards that we're going to present. And the first person we're going to recognize tonight is a gentleman you heard speak today. He was our, our lunchtime speaker. He is someone who is an, as you heard him, you can just tell he's an incredibly talented political mind, communications expert. He's somebody who, you know, the world is filled with, with a lot of political talent, right? A lot of them just wake up every day, how am I gonna make my next big consulting check? You know, I'll work for anybody who's out there. You know, they, they don't necessarily look at the bigger picture of things. The people that are driven by one thing, I'm gonna, how much money can I make this month, how much billings can I have? And I recognize, you know, if you have a business, that, you know, you have, to be, you, you have to make a profit. But there's also balancing that with your integrity, and, and the kind of person you want to be. And John Sawinski is a guy who really could do anything with his life. He's an incredibly talented person. And he has dedicated, really, at least 25 years of his life, since 1994, to fighting you know, the, the issue of expanding predatory gambling in his state. He founded No Casinos Florida. I mean, he's been able to raise money for people to convince other big influential folks in Florida to get involved. And he's put his, put his values into action. And he's raised his family, you know, his great kids, you know, been a successful person in that state. And just his contribution to this fight is, is really, 
it's something that needs to be recognized. So, so tonight I'm very honored for, uh, for one of our Salt Shaker Awards to give somebody who's lived his life as a talented professional, but has been somebody who's lived his life, lived his life with goodness and virtue. So John Swinsky, I'd love to have you come up, please. For the and it reads, John Swinsky, for living a life with goodness and virtue, stop predatory gambling. Thank you. And I'd love to have you sit up here for one second. Yes, yes, actually, yeah. I should have asked. Uh, <laughs> there, you, there you go. Thanks. So, our next award is somebody who I've had the pleasure to meet, uh, I don't know, really, not maybe 14 or 15 years ago. It was on the first or second year I was involved with this fight. Um, but it's somebody, you heard her speak earlier today, who is really just again, put her faith into action. And not just on this issue, if you're someone who's friends with her on social media or whatever, you just realize the goodness that she emits in all aspects of her life, but especially in this fight. And so she, this woman is, is Rhonda Hadafi out of Oregon, who has literally been, you know, in a state where like, Oregon is as bad as any state in this country when it comes to predatory gambling. You go out to breakfast with your kids to like a, a breakfast shop, and they've got, you know, slot machines or the video video gambling machines, like right there in the corner, they're everywhere. Okay, right in the middle of the table, put a huge thing right in the middle of your your, your uh, breakfast table. You know, go play the organ lottery video gambling machines. You know, so she's right on the face of it. Okay, and she acts with a, a, you know a sense of of out of love, a, a selflessness, but she has an incredible backbone. But so she is somebody really who, who I think. And I think of people who've really embodied the spirit of this fight nationally over the last 25 years. I mean, she is, is right, right among those people who have set the tone for us and has really allowed other people to come behind her. And so tonight, I'm, I'm extremely proud to, to recognize Rhonda Hadafi of the state of Oregon uh, for being a, a part of our South Central Award winner. Picture of myself and Rhonda. That's such a beautiful country. Thank you. The last person we're going to recognize tonight, and if, if you hadn't had a chance to meet her, it's really, you can't be at this conference without spending some time to talk with her. Uh, Pat Lunger of the state of Nebraska is somebody who, we, 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 when you think of the salt shaker or the idea of living a life of goodness and virtue, there is nobody I've ever met in my life to be in perfect candor with you who more embodies the idea of living that kind of life in all aspects of this she does more than Pat Murphy does. So yes, she's involved with this issue, but back in Omaha, she's somebody like, she ordered like the fun, girl, fun person's club, and like, she ordered events, she travels everywhere. Like the way she, she moves across, across all aspects of the world to touch people's lives with, with selfless love, just mercy and forgiveness and just pitching in whatever it takes to help other people. Um, it's just, it's, it's unparalleled to anybody I know. And and just, you know, and I just say, now my kids were little when I started, my kids were four and one when I got involved with this fight. And, and she said that she'd send the kids gifts, she'd send them notes, you know, car, like just, not just me, she does that to everybody. You know, she just invests herself in other people. And in the way, we, 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 it, the way it's not an old student, it's, it's really, it's for real. I never met anybody like that. And so, Pat Munger, in terms of the culture of our national board and our organization, she is the embodiment of the spirit of this organization. And so, that's why we saved her for the last one, because she really is the heart and soul of this effort. I am so thankful for, the, for her, for all she's done for me personally, but for everyone in this fight. And I just hope you get a chance to spend some time with her. And I will say, that last thing I was, I come from a world of politics where like, you know, especially from Boston, like, you gotta you gotta try to win an issue. You kinda wanna be rough and tough, you know, yeah. You know, you can't be soft, right? You gotta be, hey, well, that guy's doing that to me, I don't gotta do this to him, you know. <laughs> Pat, Pat is somebody, you know, she has a unicameral legislature in Nebraska, it's the only place in the country that has a, a unicameral 
uh, body. The path, like, the way she convinces people, it's not about muscle. It's not about saying, hey, listen, we're going to run something against you in the next campaign. We're going to primary you. They don't, she doesn't talk that way. But Pat does. She walks around her state capital. Literally, this is the truth. And she'll deliver pies, fresh baked pies, to senators' offices. So here I'm thinking, like, because when you meet Pat, you meet, like, how is this person, like, how is she, you know, arguably one of the most influential political people in the state of Nebraska? You really, know, she's like the nicest person. She's a sweetheart. But she, it, it, she, I had come to learn from Pat that there's, there's more than one way to persuade people. And she is just the ability to, to connect people, to change hearts and minds of people. It's a phenomenal gift. And so she literally delivered pies to state center offices. And, and we'll get them to vote for that. Like, totally different way of winning. So if you try to meet someone, I, I, you know, as a coffee guy, I think I know everything about politics. Well, what can I learn? I learned a heck of a lot from Pat <laughs> from politics. So Pat, please come up. started this involved with this work I actually had a friend who's here today it was actually Carrie Teal who's here and gave me a book you know again I, I thought I knew everything I was a political operator I knew that I, really, I thought I was gonna be the next Lee Atwater or James Carville back in the 1990s that's where I thought I, I wanted to be um, got the you know, one of the elite political strategists in the country and and so when I started getting this about this work I had to relearn what, what it means to be, what, what politics is about and this book was as influential as any book I read and it was called Bury the Chains, okay? And Bury the Chains is a book about the first human rights movement in the history of the world, all right? And it actually takes place in Great Britain, so it's great that we have some, some, some of our, our, our friends here from the United Kingdom. As the, the movement to abolish the slave trade began in the UK in terms of really being organized. And, and how it started, as I'm sharing the stories, it started with 12 people. It was like the late 1780s, okay? And, and, there's, and there's a quick anecdote in this book where in that period of our country's, of the world's history, in the late 1780s, 75% of the world, think about this, 75% of the world was enslaved in some way. So they were either, either literally in bondage or you were an indentured servant in some way, but three out of four people across the world in the late 1780s was enslaved, okay? So with these, so 12 people, there were 11 Quakers, all right, and one Episcopalian minister named Tom Clarkson, who just graduated from the cemetery, they got together at some print shop or something in London, and they changed human history. They went out and they built a movement, took them 40 years, with all kinds of, you know, facing incredible violence and so on, and they changed the, a, a world where 75% of the people were enslaved in some way. No one even questioned it, okay? And so when we talk about how tough this fight is, and sure, it's tough. I don't minimize it. I mean, it's, it's tough as heck. I mean, every day it's tough. But like, it's people like Thomas Clark. When I heard about Thomas, if that's the guy, when I think of that tough day, yeah, it's that guy. We did, they just ran us over in the state today or whatever. Like, I think of people like Thomas Clarkson who've lived in history, who have faced the same challenges that you all have, the same insecurities, the same sense of frustration, but they never quit. Really, they had a good strategy. They weren't just blind. They, just, they worked their tails off, but they did it. And I just want to say like, there's people in this room, you know, who I get inspiration from every day, but it's people like from history. History tells us that if you if you do the right thing and you keep and have a good strategy, that you will prevail. So on this fight, for me, like this is you know, this is my life's work. I'm not going anywhere. I burnt the boats a long time ago on this. And I hope all of you will stay with us and invest in this fight going forward. So we'll have a great day tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your dinner. And uh, yes, sir, last thing. One correction. I yeah. agree with everything you said, except for one thing. Right. He graduated from seminary, not cemetery. <laughs> well, that's what I said. I said. That's my Boston failure on Wednesday. So, thank you. All right. Enjoy the rest of your night, everybody. Thank you.